identifying minerals. Rocks are made up of minerals. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. So in a typical rock, you may have one or more minerals that make it up. This video is going to help us identify how we can detect the minerals that are present in a rock or a mineral sample. All minerals can be identified based on their physical characteristics. We'll be looking at five general characteristics and how we can use them to observe and identify minerals. We'll also talk about some other tests that we can do that fall under the other category that not all minerals will have. Let's start with color. Now color seems like it would be a very easy test to perform. All we need to do is look. But there's a problem with mineral color. Minerals exist in almost every color. And when we look at our Earth Science Reference Table, on the very last page, there's a column dedicated to color. And when we observe these colors for any mineral, it's never one color, it's a range of colors. Some are colorless. So that really tells us that color probably isn't a good test to rely on. For instance, this is quartz, and quartz comes in many different colors. And if I was trying to identify quartz just based on its color, it would be very hard to do because it's, it's varied. Take this example. These are all green minerals, but they're all different minerals, which tells you that using color is not going to be reliable. So in summary, color is the worst characteristic to base any mineral identification on because it's unreliable. There's not enough information. You can use it in conjunction with other tests, but just keep in mind that just looking at a color of a mineral is not going to tell you what it is. Our next test is hardness. Now hardness is something that you're probably familiar with whether you realize it or not. In your bathroom, in your kitchen, you probably have tile or you have granite countertops. And those stone-based products have a certain resistance to being scratched. That's the hardness of a mineral. Hardness itself is based on a scale of 1 to 10. We call it Mohs scale of mineral hardness. At the low end, at 1, the softest mineral is talc. Talc makes a baby powder, talcum powder, very soft. On the far end, we have diamond, which is a 10, the hardest mineral that we know. Nothing is stronger or can break diamond except for other diamonds. Somewhere in the middle is glass. And this whole system of testing for a mineral's hardness is based on using a glass plate to give us an indicator of how hard or how soft a mineral is. Here's a quick video on how to perform a hardness test. Um, we're going to talk about the hardness test. Now the hardness test is really based upon using a glass plate. Now, we use a glass plate as an indicator. Glass has a hardness of 5.5. So, when we use the glass plate, um, we're really trying to see if a mineral is lower than 5.5 or higher than 5.5. And the way that we perform this test is taking a mineral and trying to make a scratch in the glass. Now, a lot of the glass that you'll deal with in the lab already has scratches on it. So you really have to pick a spot, pick an area and say, okay, and when I feel it, there are no scratches there. So I'm going to aim to make a scratch there. Okay. So here's my sample of gypsum. I'm going to try to scratch a line into this glass. And I'm going to use some pressure, not too much. So I did it, but did I really make a scratch? Now this is transparent, so you really can't get a good idea, but I didn't make a scratch because when I rub my finger across it, when I'm actually feeling it, I didn't make a real mark. I didn't etch anything. 
I did nothing. <laughs> so let's try another. Let's one. try this again. This is a sample of Horn Blend. That sounded like a scratch. So let's take a look. Now, again, hard for you to see, but when I rub my nail against it, I feel an etching. I made a scratch. So I know that this mineral has a hardness greater than 5.5. Sometimes that's all I need to know is that it's greater than 5.5. Whereas this mineral, which I tested first, has a mineral less than 5.5. Now, I want to get more specific with that. There's a couple of little things I can do if it's less than 5.5. I can take a penny, because a penny has a hardness of 3, and see if the mineral scratches the penny. And if the mineral scratches the penny, like leaves behind a notch, then I know the mineral is harder than 3, and it's somewhere between 3 and 5.5. In this case, that didn't happen. If I can take the penny and scratch the mineral, which I just did, I know that the mineral, it has a hardness less than three. And there's one more way I can see what this hardness is, because I know it's less than three because it scratched the penny scratched it. I could take my fingernail and see if the mineral scratches my fingernail. And if it doesn't scratch my fingernail, then I know that this has a hardness less than two and a half because my fingernail has a hardness of two and a half. So using that series of tests can give us an idea of what the hardness is of any mineral. Our next test isn't really a test. It's looking at the property luster. Luster is the ability of a mineral to give off a certain shine, how it reflects light. And there are really two types of luster. There's metallic luster, which makes sense. If you're a metal, you're going to look metally or metallic. You're going to be shiny. Or there's non-metallic. And now non-metallic is sometimes difficult to spot because there are certain properties that non-metallic lusters have, like a shininess, a sheen, but doesn't make it metallic. So just keep in mind when you see a mineral and it's kind of waxy or glassy, that doesn't necessarily mean it's, you know, metallic. Think of metallic as being like a metal, and anything else will probably fall into the non-metallic category. Here's a quick video on using this property to identify minerals. All right, so testing for the mineral property called luster really requires no special tools, just your eyes. So let's take a look at this sample, this mineral sample. Um, when I look at it, when I expose it to light, I don't see a metallic appearance. I see more of an earthy, um, you know, dull, non-metallic luster. Um, something like this sample of Galena has a very metallic luster. You could see the sheen that it has. It looks like a metal. It actually has some lead in it which is where um, it gets its metallic properties from. So this is a metallic luster. Uh, a confusing luster are the lusters of something like this halite. Okay, this halite has a glassy luster. So is it shiny? I guess, I guess you could say it's shiny. It does give off some sheen to it, but I wouldn't say it's metallic. I mean, glass is not metallic. So when you see minerals like this um, halite or this calcite, okay, you gotta look carefully and say, okay, if it's glassy, that's non-metallic. That's not a metallic luster. 